our chat series. I'm excited to have the post-show guest Julio Arias for the USA Sport Karate Knuckle Up Championships post-show. So how are you doing today, Julio? Good. I can't complain. Good. Awesome. Well, so I'm excited to have this show because for the post show, we're going to be interviewing you in your role and your capacity as a judge. So it's a different perspective. Um, I'm sure you were busy the entire tournament. So let's just yeah. recap some of the highlights that you remember of the Knuckle Up Championships. So throughout the day, we had the all the Waco divisions. We had the Waco uh, light contact, the Waco kick light. You know, we saw a good amount of competitors for that. You see those divisions growing little by little every single time um, come around. You know, you see a lot more people that you wouldn't typically see at an open sport karate tournament. You see them kind of stepping in and then you see them kind of hanging around and watching how the point fighting style goes down and stuff. So it's really cool. What it does introduce a new thing. And in that sense, you see a lot of like that 14 to 17 range where you see a lot of point fighting, you know, uh, competitors drop off. You see them now having another route to be able to continue into the older divisions. And I mean, you have your classic USA Sport Karate, you know, uh, champions, you see them all the time there. I mean, Luke sweeped a lot of his divisions, you know, he did really, really good in his fights. Um, from Championship Martial Arts, um, there's this kid, AJ, you know, he's a really, really good fighter, really technical, listens to his coaches, always very respectful. Um, from all ages, I mean, and then you have like from the big teams, you saw you saw Devin Hopper there, you saw Kevin's, uh, Kevin, Walker, you saw uh, Kitana Everett was there. So it was really, really nice to see it. Uh, Renzo from Team G3. You know, you see a lot of big names at these local tournaments. You know, Florida does host a lot of these big fighters. And it's awesome to see them at these local events. And in a setting like an all fighting tournament, like the Knuckle Up Championship, it was really, really nice to see all of them there. I was going to mention that, you know, it's an all fighting tournament. Um, it's sort of like the what fighters really want you know instead of having to wait around for the forms and also from a judge's perspective you get to sort of like focus on one thing what's that like so it makes it i would say a little bit more difficult for a judge especially when it comes to you know maybe judges that are a lot more comfortable in a form judging setting compared mm -hmm. to an all fighting tournament um but obviously those judges that love to uh, judge fighting you know that's like it's the gold pot for them. They would love to, because they show up nine in the morning and from 9 a.m. all the way up until five in the afternoon, it's just fight after fight after fight after fight. You know, so it's really, really good. I do enjoy it a lot. You know, the forms, it does bring a, a, a different crowd, you know, compared to the fighting. It just kind of, an all fighting tournament sets kind of an environment and like an energy in the room that everybody's there for the same goal to put out their best fights and to do the best that they can in the ring. So it's really, really nice to see kind of the change of scenery a little bit when it comes to a regular, what you would see at a, a sport karate tournament compared to like an all fighting setting. Everyone's there, they're already geared up. You know, it's funny because you see a lot of the kids running out because they're used to changing, but they don't have to change. They stay in their fighting uniform. So it was really, really nice to see all of them. It was good. It's a hyper focused event, which is great, you know, um, even though there are there is a difference. There's a, a bunch of different divisions for people to participate in, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. something that um, I get, I've judged a couple only a handful of times, but it takes so much focus. How do you manage being 100 percent from nine to five? Did you take breaks? What's your strategy as a judge? So in the famous words of Jeremy Roque, there is no breaks allowed. You have to push all the way through. And I understand why he pushes that so much on his on his center judges. It's because you want to be able to have consistency from your ring from the beginning of the day to the end of the day. It is difficult for some judges to do. You know, some judges, you know, they, you know, get very easily distracted. You know, they kind of want to do other things or they want to take a little break. The difference is when you're coming from a competitor side into um, a judge's perspective, it's super important for you to make sure that those competitors get fair calls there you know exactly what it is that you're calling you're being very unbiased when it comes to you know let's say right now we're in a blitz generation where everybody wants to blitz but you know sometimes the kick will land just slightly little things like that that you have to really understand the game in total to be able to be what i would call a good judge you know because everyone can judge everyone can call when you see a point a punch or a kick but there's a difference when you have these clashes constantly, you know, how to be able to, as a center judge, differentiate what you would consider a technique 
and what you would consider they're just you know putting their hand on the person for example or their foot is getting up there but you're they're falling all over the place or they're losing balance you know all of those different things it does take a little bit of time to get used to it you know but definitely i would say if you're wanting to be a consistent referee and you're wanting to be one of those referees that everyone says oh man that's such a good ref you know it's just all about being consistent you know uh really focus study watch fights on video um when when you're a corner judge take advantage of the less pressure you have as a corner where the center has that final call and you're just kind of there to support and help out you know so take advantage of those really pay attention you know be very i would say cautious on making an an if 50 50 call you know my ruling when i talk to my corners and any of my rings it's it's either a clean call or a no call don't mm -hmm take a chance and say well maybe he punched or maybe he kicked because it's one point at the beginning of the match but when you get to a last point wins at the end of the match that one point really does make a difference you know so when it comes to those, that aspect as well as you know as a center you want to enforce the rules and you know when you're a supporter of a league like usa sport karate you want to make sure that you have you know every tournament everyone leaves with the same thing where they're focused on how can I do better? Not so much I have to be fighting against the judge's calls or I have to be worrying about, oh man, I have this judge in my ring. You know, I might not win today because of that judge. You know, that's not an excuse to be able to do it. You know, in the USA Sport Karate, it's either you did good or you need to focus on what you got to do better. Would you say that as a, I'm getting the vibe, I can kind of predict your answer potentially, but would you say that you're more of a conservative judge when it comes to point giving or a, a liberal type sort of when you... Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, it has to, it has to be it has to be cl clean and clear from every angle. The mm -hmm. point has to be able to be called. And, you know, I've done it as a center judge where I have my corners maybe make a couple of iffy calls. I'll stop the fight. I'll pull them in and I'll let them know. Listen, guys, you have to be make sure that you're clear. And again, if you're not sure of the point, do not call it because it's, a, you know, like I said, when you're coming from a com com competitor side into the judging, you know, you know what it feels like when you're like, I know my body punch is scoring first but they just don't call it or they're not seeing it. So I need to focus on how to make it clear, but it's kind of a lose lose situation for those fighters that are always saying, you know, oh, the judges aren't calling my points, the judges aren't calling my points. And maybe sometimes it happens, you know, sometimes judges aren't perfect. We do make mistakes, you know, we might make a call faster than we should have, or we might try and retract the call, you know, so that's why it's super important as a center to be very conservative in it and be very black and white with it because that gray area is so big in a fighting tournament and so big in judging and karate. You know, you want to make sure that as the center judge, you're there to kind of lay down that final ruling. And then obviously you have the help of your arbitrators at the tournament and things like that as well. So. Can you give us a little glimpse into what maybe the conversations you have, not just you, but like the center judges of USA Sport Karate have either in like pre-meetings or whether that's in trainings? Um, what are some of the biggest messages that are sent besides clear, uh, clear points that you're giving out? So obviously in th this tournament that it was just a fighting tournament, the pre-fight, mm. the pre-tournament meeting was more as to clarification of rules any questions that we have about rules you know the coordinators are really really big on having us ask them questions you know they prefer us to ask them three times four times and to be sure of what we're doing than to not ask and just assume because mm -hmm. this is the way i've done it for you know five six seven years so what you would typically see in one of those pre-tournament meetings is number one the image of the judges are super important for usa sport karate so in the sense of they're very strict when it comes to their dress code, they're very strict when it comes to the verbiage that you're using with different uh, competitors. You know, um, they're very strict with making sure that every competitor feels that they're noticed and that they're recognized. You know, if you came out first place or if you came out last place, you know, everybody gets the same treatment. Um, we're very big as well on making sure that the competitor and the spectator experience is very important. So. I know so, this is kind of like, you know, um, I would say it's kind of undecided. Some people prefer the clean floor look where mm -hmm. it's just the competitors mm -hmm. and the judges. Some people love when the whole ring is crowded up. You know, it all depends on perspective. When it comes to a spectator and a competitor's experience, we all believe the same thing, that the ring should be nice and clear. You know, everybody should be able to see what they're doing. You know, so it's they're very big on that to make sure that the center controls their ring and their ring doesn't just include what's happening inside the tatami. It's what's happening 
on the borders, what's happening with your coaches, what's happening with your scorekeepers. So make sure that the, the center referee is controlling all of those aspects, as well as, you know, when it comes to clarification of rules, you know, making sure that everybody's clear about the same thing, what is allowed, what's not allowed. If there is any changes for certain divisions, for example, like a super fight division, the fact that you can score multiple points where you can score if you use a, a clean technique, if the person falls, if they fall out of bounds, all of those different things. So it's super, super important for them. And obviously in a regular tournament setting where it comes to forms, they do the same thing. They go over the clarification of the rules. They let everybody know these are the weapons that are allowed. These are the weapons that are not allowed. These techniques are allowed. These techniques are not allowed. And like I said, they always have arbitrators all over the floor, you know, and they're always helping us out if we have any clarification of rules that you can arbitrate at any time, you know, and we're very verbal and very uh, vocal with our coaches because it's super important. A coach's role is there to make sure that their fighter gets fair calls, that their fighters encouraged and they're focused on doing their job. So we're very vocal with the coaches. Coaches come up to us all the time and ask us, hey, you know, why did this call go this way? We can easily explain it to them and we can confidently give them an answer because everybody if you go to ring one or you go to ring eight, it's gonna be the same ruling on all rings. So that's very, very important for them at USA Sport Karate. Okay, awesome. This has been super interesting to get a little bit of a glimpse, specifically USA Sport Karate operations from the judge's perspective, as well as getting into a judge's mind. Now, the next, I guess my final question, um, it could come from your answer as a martial artist background or as a judge, whatever you want. But if you could change one rule or add take away, what would it be in sport karate fighting? You could have your pick. I've seen this, you know, TikTok or basketball players ask this. They would want six fouls to foul. What would be your thing? So... I mean, like I said, you know, I, I'm very strong. I'm very confident in standing behind the, the league and the rules that we have. You know, I've seen other leagues, not to the extent of other people where I've been going to these big, you know, international events for many years because I really haven't. So I can't tell you from personal experience, mm -hmm. but from the small experiences that I have had in person or have watching on the Internet, which I've been doing since I was very young, you know, the biggest rule that I really, you know, I'm super strong against is when fighters are either falling down or they're not looking at the technique that they're doing. Because, you know, if you put it, yeah, we're at a tournament and it's a sports setting and things like that. But, you know, you can look across the board for any sport. You know, when there's a clear, you know, um, miss, um, you're not controlling the techniques that you're doing, you're not controlling the movement that you're doing, no judge is going to call it. In basketball, if you're just kind of throwing the ball up in the air and they just happen to hit your arm, don't expect them to give you the foul. The same thing at the at, you would want at a sport karate tournament. If you're throwing the kick and you're falling down every single time or you're throwing mm -hmm. your blitz and your head is down or you're kind of just moving around and you just happen to throw a back fist out there and it hits them in the head, don't expect those points to be called. For two reasons, you don't want fighters to build confidence in the techniques that they're throwing when it's not applicable in, in tournaments across the board. So if you're at a USA Sport Karate tournament, if you're at a NASCA tournament, if you're at a, um, you know, a WACO tournament, you want it kind of to be even across the board because it's very difficult for fighters to prepare for, you know, oh, I'm going to go compete in Florida or I'm going to go compete in uh, New Jersey or now I'm going to go compete in Italy and I, I want the rules to be all the same. So that's why it's super important, I feel, to have a standard for the sport, you know, and then you can have your special divisions where certain things are allowed, things like that. And probably the only other thing that I would want to change is when it comes to uh, the aspect of like what, what a coach's role is, mm -hmm. right? A coach's role is to speak only to their fighter and to help their fighter. Because if you look at any other pr professional combat sport, Coaches, mm -hmm. corner men don't speak to the referees. The referees are there to protect the fighter's safety, to make sure the rules are being enforced, and that's it. That's their two jobs, you know. Mm -hmm. Obviously, as a, as a sport karate tournament, you have to, you know, there's a lot of other little things that you do, but those mm -hmm. are your two main goals. Make sure that the fighters are safe while they're fighting. Make sure that the rules are being enforced. And the coach's job is to make sure they're doing too many times, and it happens a lot because you have these big promoters, you have these big team owners that they're coaches, and, you know, Unfortunately, their ego gets into it a little bit and they're like, hey, I'm such and such. You have to make you have to listen to what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, as a judge, I've had to kind of just give them the cold shoulder, you know, and it's, some people might not like it. Some people might like it. But 
like I said, a judge, a judge's job or referee's job should be kind of excluded from what's going on in the tournament. So you can be part of the, the karate community and you can be friends and things like that. But when it's tournament day, you shouldn't have the socialization between coaches and judges. Mm -hmm. Because as a spectator, if it's my first tournament and I'm seeing a judge and a coach, you know, high-fiving and hugging each other and things like that, and then five minutes later, you're giving him every single call, what is the spectator going to assume? You know, mm -hmm. you, you, you have to make it clear for them that, you know, a judge's job is to do two things, which I said is enforce the rules, make sure the fighters are safe. Coaches' jobs are to coach their fighters, you know, in, in that setting, you want to have a professional, you know, setting. You don't want it to be, oh, well, this tournament, the judges are wearing flip-flops and they're high-fiving and eating dinner with the coaches. And then the next tournament, nobody's talking to each other. You want it to be standard across the board. So that's why I feel like, you know, I've really found my home refereeing here at USA Sport Karate. You know, I have I grew up, you know, competing in the in the league and I'm super, um, super, um, I want to make sure that the league continues the way that it's going. You know, and, you know, we have a couple events in Georgia this year. I'm super excited for mm -hmm. we have Miami this weekend. So it's it's looking good. It's, everything is going the right direction. You know, we just have to make sure that our judges are all on the same page. And, you know, either you're on board or you're going to have to, you know, find another league to judge at. Awesome. Well, this has been it's been a pleasure to have you on the Power Chat series, Julio. I appreciate it. And, you know, congratulations to the whole operation team of the USA Sport Karate's Knuckle Up Championship. It looked like all the photos I saw looked like a great time. Yeah. All right. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for watching, guys. And I have the next pre-show coming up later today. All righty, Isabella.